Welcome to video number two. All right, so I want to point out that when we did the two column proof, it was a rather linear argument. If statement number one is true, which it is, it's given to be true, then statement number two is true. And if statement number two is true, then statement number three is true. And if three is true, then four is true. And if four is true, then five is true. Therefore, since they are all linked, if statement number one is true, then statement number five has to be true. So we just proved that if x minus 8 is equal to 2 times the sum of 3x and 1, that x equals negative 2. All right, that's why we proved it, right? Now, that was a very linear argument. One statement led to the next, that led to the next, that led to the next, that led to the next, right down the line. Well, not every argument is quite so linear, right? That's a good time to use a flow chart proof. Oh, speaking of flow proof, you should have seen my rock star hair this summer. Uh, when I couldn't get in for a haircut, it just grew and grew. I looked like a rock star again. Believe me, I did. All right, so uh, we're going to uh, show the first two givens, all right? We are given that this is true, and we are given that this is true. So these are like little note card kind of things. You know, cut out a note card, write a statement on it. Take another note card, cut, uh, put a statement on it. Underneath the statement, you put the reason, right? Instead of putting it next to it in another column, just put it underneath. All right, so it's given that the two equations are true and we're trying to prove that x is negative 10. Now if I saw this one, I would want to probably make it simpler. Divide each side by 2. So we will do that, all right? The result is y is equal to 6. We're using the division property of equality to come to that conclusion. This little arrow right here is kind of nice because it shows you that this statement came from that statement. Now, what are you going to do next? Well, a method that you learned for solving when you have two unknowns and two equations was substitution. And this 6 right here could be substituted in for that y. So you'd be making use of both this and this equation. So I'm going to show two arrows here, right? Both those arrows are pointing at this statement. The statement comes from both of those. We're substituting the 6 that we're told that is uh, the value of y here in for y here. So substitution property of equality. Now we only have one variable, and we're going to add 6 to both sides of the equation. And we get through negative 3x equals 30. Addition property of equality because I added 6 to both sides. Last step, divide both sides by negative 3 and x is equal to negative 10. Division property of equality and you are done. All right, now why do you have to write all the reasons? Because you're supposed to justify things. All right, that's... Somebody who's making a valid argument should be able to justify things. All right. You should know why you can make each step, not just be able to do each step. Okay, so there you go. A flow chart proof. Okay, now a paragraph proof. So basically, a paragraph proof, you just are going to... Write out an explanation. All right, you're given segment AB, the segment, is congruent to segment CD, and this little tick mark means one same number of tick marks on each one. That means they are congruent. So that's what you're given. So that's what you're going to start your sentence with. 
Okay, so what does congruent mean? Like same size, same shape, right? Congruent means like same size and same shape, right? And then, all right, this is, I put this in small font, but it's really important. Make a note of it. Okay, so we learn in, in general, congruent means same size, same shape. But two segments are going to be congruent as long as they're the same length. So if the distance from A to B is the same as the distance from D to C, right, then they will be congruent segments. Okay, so two segments, oh, if and only if, remember I said uh, in the last lesson, all right, any definition can be written by using the words if and only if a biconditional statement. A definition is a true biconditional statement. What that means is if you're given the congruent symbol, see congruent means like the figures are the same uh, figuratively. All right, if I took this segment and I could drag it, it would land right on top of this segment. The figures are the same. Okay, equals is about values. That has to be distances. The distance from A to B is a value. It's a certain distance. It's a number. It can be measured. CD is a value. So if this is true, then this is true. If this is true, then this is true. Use the definition of congruent segments whenever you want to switch from one to the other. All right, so... It is given that segment AB is congruent to segment CD. So then I can write that AB equals CD. The distance from A to B equals distance from C to D. Figures are congruent. But their measures might be equal. These are their measures. That's the distance from A to B. That's the length of segment AB. That's the length of segment CD. They're equal in length. Okay, and that's the definition of congruent segments that allows me to switch from this congruent statement to this equals uh, equation. It's an equation that has an equal sign. All right, so then by the substitution of uh, property of equality, because in the picture we can see the distance from A to B is given as 2x plus 5. So we replace AB with 2x plus 5. We replace CD with 4x minus 5. So if we're replacing that substitution, see, I'm just I'm providing the statements and the reasons. I'm just writing it as a paragraph. Hence, we call it a paragraph proof. So now I'm going to use the addition property of equality, and I'm going to add 5 to this side and add 5 to this side. Also, I'll add negative 2x to this side and negative 2x to this side. This negative 2x will disappear. Since I was adding 5 to both sides, I get 10 over here. And then we're going to just switch the, let's switch the equation. That bothers me when x is on the right. Does that bother you? All right. So that is, oops, not reflexive. Let's correct that symmetric. See, they're so easy to mix up. But I know the right one is symmetric. All right. That's like butterfly wings. They reflect onto each other. They could swap places and you'd never know it. All right. So then divide each side by 2 and you have x equals 5 by the division property of equality. And there's our paragraph proof. So now we know how to do a flow proof. And we know how to do a paragraph proof. Let's prove a theorem. This is called the midpoint theorem. If M is the midpoint of segment AB, then segment AM is congruent to segment MB. All right, write this down too in your notes. Take good notes. All right, you have to write notes. You have to keep track of all the things you're supposed to know. The more things you know, the more things you have to justify other things, right? And the knowledge you gain in this class, it really piles up. Take good notes. So definition of midpoint. All right, M 
is the midpoint of segment AB. If the distance from A to M, that means distance, is equal to the distance from M to B. And because it also says if and only if, we can say if the distance from A to M equals the distance from M to B, then M is the midpoint. Okay, so if and only if means it's true in both directions. If you're given M as a midpoint, then you can say AM equals MB. If you're given AM equals MB, all right, and M is a point between A and B, uh, then M is the midpoint. Making a flowchart proof. We know M is the midpoint of segment AB. All right, that's the if, right? The, the hypothesis is given to be true. We have to show that if the hypothesis is true, then this conclusion follows to be true. Well, if I know M is the midpoint right here, then I can conclude that the distance from A to M equals distance from M to B. So the definition of midpoint allows me to make this conclusion, right? Now, if the distance from A to M equals the distance from M to B, now we go back to this definition of congruent segments right here. If the segments are congruent, then these distances are equal. If these distances are equal, then the segments are congruent. So segment AM is, got to change that sign to congruent now. All right, don't ever use the equal sign for segments. Segments aren't equal. Their lengths might be equal, but segments are geometric figures, and geometric figures might be congruent if they're the same size and shape. We know that two segments are congruent as long as the distance from you know one endpoint to the other is equal for both. All right, definition of congruent segments allows us to change from the equation to the congruent statement. All right, it's a good place to leave off, and there's going to be a third video coming from this lesson to discuss some postulates, and then you'll be ready to do the assignment. But I hope you're feeling comfortable that these proofs make some sense. Don't worry on the assignment. You're not always asked to write an entire proof. On a test, you might not have to write an entire proof, but we might ask you to provide some reasons for the steps or maybe give you a reason and ask for the statement that goes with that reason. Okay, reasons that justify steps can be definitions. They can be theorems. They can be properties. They can be postulates. What's well, postulate? That's what the next video is about. All right. I hope you're enjoying geometry. Oh, dear. All right. Next video will be postulates.